This Week in IT. Microsoft fixes some critical Windows vulnerabilities in this week's Patch Tuesday. New research shows that businesses are increasingly worried about Broadcom's new pricing and business model for VMware. And Oracle partners with AWS to offer some multi-cloud features. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Windows, Azure, and Microsoft 365. But before I get started, I've got a quick favor to ask you. About 40% of all the people who watched our last video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 7,700 subscribers, and I'd love it if we could push that up to 7,800. So if you'd like to see these weekly news roundups from Petri.com, Please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. Back in August, Alan Leviva, researcher from SafeBreach, identified a new issue in certain versions of Windows 10 where hackers could actually compromise the servicing stack and roll back updates that had been applied to the operating system. Now, obviously, that's potentially a very serious security concern. Now, the good news is that this only affects Windows 10 version 1507, which has actually reached end of life, but of course, some enterprises are still using it. Microsoft has identified that there is this vulnerability. They did that in September. And if you're still using that version of Windows 10, there are two things that you need to do. You need to apply the servicing stack update that Microsoft released in September, and you need to apply the security fix for Windows 10 that Microsoft released as part of this week's Patch Tuesday. Back in January of this year, an independent security researcher identified a problem with Windows Installer. This applies to software that's already installed on a device. And if a user gets an, an installer to run an upgrade on that existing software, there's a small window of opportunity there as the installer upgrades the rights that it's using to install that upgrade, where a hacker could hijack that process and then get those same admin rights to do essentially whatever it is that they want. It seems that Microsoft found it harder than expected to fix this issue. So it's taken quite a long time to get a patch out there, but it's finally now available as part of the updates that came in Patch Tuesday. Broadcom and VMware are back in the news this week. It's not the first time that we've covered VMware on this channel. Those of you who are using VMware in your organization are probably already aware aware of the Broadcom takeover that already happened two or three years ago and the way that Broadcom is restructuring the VMware business model and changing the pricing structure, which is increasing prices for organizations. And it seems maybe now to a point where it's really starting to cause a lot of concern. Now, the reason this has been in the press again this week is because a different company, Sivo, which also produce uh, virtualization solutions and an alternative to VMware, so you should bear that in mind, commission some research that shows that organizations are really starting to get concerned and are potentially looking for alternatives to VMware. As part of this research, Sivo revealed that organizations are still concerned about the Broadcom acquisition and the potential uncertainty of what's going to happen in the future. Organizations are apparently looking at open source solutions for alternatives to VMware virtualization that VMware is providing them, but they do have concerns about who's updating that software, who's supporting it, and those are the biggest concerns that organizations have around moving to open source alternatives. Henry Godwin, who's the vice president of product sales at Sivo, is saying that we've heard from a lot of concerned VMware customers over the previous nine months. Ultimately, businesses want certainty. They cannot continue in a situation where prices are skyrocketing without any parallel improvement in service. That's 
that's really interesting this week because there do seem to be other issues with services like Canva and Docker suddenly increasing the prices of their services quite dramatically. Now, in the case of Canva, they're adding you know a whole load of extra stuff to justify that price increase. Docker says that they're bundling all sorts of things as default now to justify the increase in service. But organizations don't seem to be quite clear about the value that Broadcom is offering. Broadcom is saying, no, we're doing you a favor. We're trying to simplify things and ultimately make this cheaper for organizations, but they just don't seem to be buying it. So if your organization is using VMware and thinking about moving to some alternative, please do let me know in the comments below. Why are you looking and what alternatives are potentially an option for your organization? This next story isn't specifically about Azure, but I thought that it was interesting to cover anyway. Oracle announced this week that it was partnering with AWS on some very specific cloud features that would essentially allow organizations to adopt a more multi-cloud strategy. Oracle have been saying for some months now already that they would prefer to see uh, it becoming easier for organizations to distribute their services and apps around several different cloud vendors. That can be quite hard to do today. Of course, there are things like Terraform that allow you to create infrastructure as code that works across many different cloud services. So there are ways to essentially roll out your services to different cloud providers in some aspects. It's not necessarily that cloud providers are collaborating with each other to make it easier for customers. Oracle is hosting its annual Cloud World Conference at the moment, and they announced that customers will be able to use Oracle Autonomous Database and Oracle Exadata database service within their AWS environments. In the keynote at the conference, it was highlighted the importance of interoperability between cloud providers. And of course, this is in Oracle's interest in some ways because they're lagging behind Azure and AWS. So again, something that you have to take with a pinch of salt maybe, uh, their motives behind <laughs> making sure that we have this interoperability between cloud providers, but I think this does have to be a good thing for businesses in the long run. Even Gartner is saying this. And I think, you know, we're going to be moving towards a world where organizations don't want to be trapped necessarily into one cloud provider, but you want to be able to run the solutions on different providers and move easily between them as and when required. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps to get the video seen by more people on YouTube. I'm going to leave you with another video on the screen now that you might find interesting about the Windows control panel and a whole load of other things, including some improvements to Windows 11 security that Microsoft is talking about this month. So do check that out. But that's it from me this week, and I'll see you next time.